can you tell us a little bit, bit about Marvel and what's coming up for you, your next Marvel project? I don't have anything to say about that. Huh? Yo, 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 0088 here. What is going on YouTube? And today we've got some massive news. Massive, massive news. And it seems like MCU has realised going woke means you're going to go broke. Eternals 2, Captain Marvel 3, Ant-Man 4. Looks like they ain't getting any new renewals. How did Captain Marvel go from a billion dollar movie to the Marvels, which ended up like almost tanking the MCU? Well, basically, it did tank the MCU. Let's read this article and find out what's going on here and see Forbes's take on it, which is probably going to be stupid. Now, keep in mind, I was a massive MCU fan, like most people from phase one up until phase three, up until Endgame. Even I thought Endgame sucked. Well, not sucked, but it just wasn't great, which is why I ended up making my own little version because I was so frustrated with what we got with Endgame. I didn't think it was terrible. I just thought it was anticlimactic and um, it felt more like an epilogue of Infinity War than Endgame feeling like a actual climax, you know? I mean, yeah, the final battle was sick, but the leading up to the final battle felt pointless, which is why I ended up making my own little how I think Endgame should have ended video, which you can check up here. It's only part one. I haven't finished part two yet. Once it gets more traction, I'll probably do part two and work on that a lot more. But anyway, let's get back into this article. Disney has previously been thought to be scaling back the MCU, which has recently become overloaded with underperforming films in theaters and vastly expensive shows on Disney+. Now we may be hearing what that will look like in practice. Insider Daniel Richman is reporting that Internals 2 is no longer in development and other potential projects like a third Captain Marvel movie or a fourth Ant-Man movie will not be pursued. If you've been tracking Marvel hits and misses, these three may not come as a huge shock as something Marvel does not want to invest in from here. All perform poorly, relatively speaking, among critics and at the box office. The three last films in question, Internals, 47% on Rotten Tomatoes, 400 million worldwide. That was his final take in. Worldwide, shit. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, 46% on 400 uh, million worldwide. The Marvels, 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, 200 million worldwide. <laughs> the 62% that it got is obviously from critics that feel like, oh, it's a feminist movie. It's got women in it. We have to go and give it a high rating, but the money doesn't show the same thing. Jesus. I think the Marvels was probably the movie alarm bell that set all this off, yeah. While 200 million Secret Invasion was probably the show alarm instead. That nah, Secret Invasion, oh my god. As much as I think both Eternals and the Marvels were underrated. Oh god, get out of here. Of course you do, Forbes. Given their performance, I can understand why sequels would not be pursued. However, I don't think it's wise for Marvel just to ditch Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and Iman Vellani's Kamala Khan should be given more to do. Oh, you want to... So they've almost tanked the MCU and you want to give them more to do. Wow, that sounds really smart. Not less, given how great she is in the role. Okay, fine. She's probably okay in the role, but do you care about Kamala Khan? Kamala Khan is for, like, little teenage girls. Face it, whether you like it or not, comic books, superheroes... The MCU, the most target audience are gonna be men, especially when you're adapting these classic characters that everyone grew up with in the like 80s and the 90s and stuff. You're adapting these classic characters. It's gonna be teenage boys and young adult males that are gonna be into this stuff. And then those young adult males will then bring in their families, their girlfriends, their sisters, and they enjoy it because they see their partner or their sibling or whatever enjoying it. That's how it works. Executives can't see that shit. <sighs> As for Ant-Man and the Wasp, they can show up in Avengers, I suppose. <laughs> so no more Ant-Man and the Wasp movies. They're just going to be Avengers side characters, kind of like Hawkeye was and Black Widow before they got their own movies and TV show. But Eternals is probably going to have to remain a what-could-have-been situation that we would not expect them to see them again. Well, maybe if you'd made the Eternals more badass and not just this... I don't know what they were trying to do with Eternals. Like, swapping all the characters... Um, looks and their personalities and like, look I get it no one really knows the Eternals that well in the uh, comic books but it worked for Guardians of the Galaxy why didn't it work for Eternals probably because Guardians of the Galaxy had tried to make a fun movie out of these characters they had a style and James Gunn brought some kind of 
uniqueness to that franchise. Whereas Eternals, they try to get Chloe Zhao, who probably doesn't even have any kind of comic book interest maybe. And she's just kind of like this arty farty director. And there's there's no chemistry there. You know, James Gunn is a comic book head. Look, he's, he's running DC. He's about to make a Superman movie that looks really faithful to the Superman comics. You've heard James Gunn speak in interviews about Adam Warlock, maybe not Adam Warlock since he didn't care about him, that's a bad example. But <laughs> You've heard James Gunn speak in interviews about characters he loves from the comics. You know James Gunn's a fan, regardless of his style of directing. So there's going to be some chemistry there, which is why Guardians of the Galaxy works. James Gunn's passionate about this kind of stuff. Chloe Zhao don't give a fuck about comic books. She don't give a fuck about superheroes. She doesn't care about this stuff. She probably took those characters from the comics and did some random shit that she thought would look Cool, and, and on top of that, she probably has a lot of shit coming from Kevin Feige and all these producers and all these executives that are telling her what not to do, which means she can't, she doesn't have full control. So then she takes herself out of the whole thing entirely and she's probably just trying to do what she can. Same with the director of the Marvels. Like she has gone on record saying that she couldn't really do what she wanted to do because there was all this uh, top down shit coming from Kevin Feige, stifling her creativity. And on top of that, she's, same as Clozel, not interested in these fucking characters. Like, why do you keep hiring people that don't give a fuck about this franchise, uh, these characters, comic books? Like, it doesn't make sense. I have to be honest, I was not very steeped in the comics. I didn't, I didn't read any comics or do any research. I wasn't familiar with comics. I wasn't familiar with the movies. We didn't lean into a whole lot of the history of the comic books. Yeah, candidly, we were not enormous um, comic fans. I wasn't super into superhero comics when I was a kid. I read a lot of like indie press stuff. First thing I was told is don't read the comics. Really? As a creator, they put you in a bubble. They don't let you talk about any of the other projects, right? You know, they're, they're up for anything. We ultimately decided to redefine it for the series and thought that it worked uh, better for the story that we're trying to tell. Did you ever read the, did you, did you, you, you no. never read the comic book. When the DVD comes out, I'm going to read a Thor comic book and just see where we went wrong. <laughs> One of these days. You're a now let's compare it to the recently released Dune 2. Dune 2 is a masterpiece movie right now. Everyone's loving on it. Everyone's glazing all over Denis Villeneuve and the film. The first film was pretty much loved. People liked it. They thought it was a bit slow. But this film just blew it out of the park, Dune 2, right? Guess what? Guess what? Denis Villeneuve, I'm probably saying his name, butchering his name completely, but you get what I'm trying to say. Denis... <laughs> Literally, when he was a kid with his best friend, was drawing storyboards of Dune. Because he read the book when he was 13 years old. He was blown away by Frank Herbert's book. And then he started drawing storyboards at 13 years old of what the movie would look like because he couldn't afford a camera to, to shoot his own little things. It's an old dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read the book when I was 13 years old. And uh, my best friend, uh, Nicolas Kedzma, and I, we were like, let's say we were on the nerd side of things and, <laughs> the nerd and, side, yeah. The, yeah. Okay. and we were we were like uh, um, dreaming about making movies we didn't have any camera so we were drawing movies so we were and and we were both in love with the book and and i remember doing some some uh, oh here we go yeah some storyboards this is yeah. when you were 13 years old yeah you drew this can we zoom I, in? I didn't i didn't nicola drew, drew them and they were inspired by by the, the dune yeah and then now 30 odd years later He's directing the movie and it was amazing. Blew everybody away because he's a fan, because he loves the source material, he loves the franchise, he loves Dune. Stop hiring people that don't love the material. And then on top of that, when you do hire people that, because obviously you can't always hire someone that loves the material, but then at least hire someone that's passionate enough to learn about the material. Not only do you hire people that don't love the source material, you're also getting people that might want to put the effort in, that might want to learn this stuff, and you're telling them to not bother. Why? What are you, what, what? Clearly that's not working, because you're failing. If we look at phase one and phase two and so on of the MCU, phase three, who were the big stars of, uh, in terms of writing and directing? We had uh, Christopher McFeely, the Russo brothers, and we had Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon used to write comic books. 
The Russo brothers are nerds, basically. It's no wonder Phase 1 and Phase 2's biggest movies all work. The other directors are actually directors that know how to write characters. They know how to adapt source material. They're professionals. Now you're getting these first-time writers, these first-time directors, based on their race and their gender and their sexualities. You don't know what their talent is. You don't know what their history is. You're not hiring based on talent anymore. You're hiring based on checkboxes. And you're wondering why all your fucking movies are failing and flopping at the box office because they're trash and not good quality. And to anybody that says, oh, you're just saying this is woke just because it's convenient. You're just saying it's woke because you don't like women doing this. You don't like black people doing this. No, that's not true. It's not just because they're making woke stuff. The woke stuff is inherently making the quality of the stuff bad because you're getting woke people to do this and they don't have no love for the product. That's the issue. It seems like when you're woke and when you're a fan, it doesn't seem to mesh well together. It seems that activism takes priority over your fanaticism for the product. It's also important to consider what era Marvel was moving into here. They are about to kick off several extremely important properties from here, namely the Fantastic Four. Oh God, look, the casting's okay. I'm not that fond of it, but Pedro Pascal. I'm just surprised they cast mostly white people, like mostly accurate cast to the comics, <laughs> except for Pedro. I don't know what they'll think of Pedro Pascal, just to piss people off a little bit if they can. Um, and then later, they take on the X-Men, in addition to keeping other heroes like Spider-Man and Captain America floating. Uh, I think Captain America is done now, right? Like Chris Evans is gone, there's no Captain America. Oh, oh you're talking about Black Falcon, all right. <laughs> Black Falcon. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how that does. We'll see that that might end up on a shopping block unless they actually make it good. Anthony, Anthony Mackie needs to like put his foot down the same way Mahershala Ali is with Blade because they might fuck him over as well if he's not careful. So in that context, slotting in a fourth Ant-Man movie or Eternals two, which would probably still cost several hundred millions each, seems ill-advised. Yeah. I'm saying it lightly. We've seen this to some extent on Disney+, Plus, but perhaps not quite to the same lengths yet. She-Hulk does not appear to be getting a second season, as according to its star, Tatiana Maslany. They blew their budget on the pricey but still bad-looking effects. Loki appears to be over. There will certainly be not be a secret invasion in season two. Disney still has quite a few questionable shows coming up. Uh, you mean like Agatha Harkness and uh, Wonder Man? I, I don't know, like some, some terrible crap. Agatha Harkness, who gives a fuck about Agatha Harkness? Seriously, MCU is so, I can't believe how bad it is now. MCU was the king of cinema at one point. MCU was like pissing everybody off in terms of like Martin Scorsese and all them kinds of people because nobody cared about those movies. All people wanted to see was superhero stuff because you were making high quality content that was fun, that was engaging, that was epic. Now everything's all the same. Everything's all rubbish. And on top of that, you've added like this whole sprinkling of unneeded activism into your movies. And not... Not only is it activism, but it's the most laziest activism possible where you just hire all these people based on their race and their gender without any kind of quality assurances or anything. You just, uh, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> there's all this ESG, is it? And, uh, and DEI stuff that like all these companies have to abide by now and BlackRock and all that kind of shit. You know what I'm talking about if you've, if you've been following this kind of stuff. And... I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if that can just be ignored. I mean, if we look over at DC, James Gunn has got probably the whitest cast I've ever seen for Superman since Man of Steel. And in fact, this cast might be whiter than Man of Steel, at least whiter and maler than the, than the original Man of Steel movie that, that was made by Zack Snyder way back in 2013. Like, Superman's white, Lois Lane is white, female looking accurate. Jimmy Olsen, the people, the person that's been race swapped and gender swapped the most for the last 15 or so years is actually accurate, shocking, you know? All the main, Lex Luthor, they could have easily turned him black. People probably wouldn't even been that upset with that. And they kept him accurate, Lex Luthor of all people. But I mean, yeah, they've turned Perry White black, but you can get away with like minor race swaps with certain characters, but James Gunn overall has got a really white cast for a major, major movie, which is unheard of since the last like 10 years or so. So obviously he's not worried about DEI that much. 
he's like put his foot down somewhere. So I don't know how much this ESG, DEI and all this kind of stuff really is like such a burden that they have to abide by it. Because James Gunn, for the, one of the biggest movies he's got, uh, isn't letting that affect him. But I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below about um, why Marvel keep making these same stupid decisions. They must really be so out of touch and have so many people in their ear about diversity that they just don't know why or understand why it doesn't work. And they just think uh, people that hate this stuff are just right-wing, sexist, racist bigots, which is just not the case. Yeah, there might be some in there, but overall, people just want to see something that's, that they can recognise from the source material. That, it's as simple as that, but for some reason they can't get that through their fucking skulls because they have all these activists just talking in their ear, telling them something that's completely untrue and wrong about what fans want. We just want something that resembles the source material, something that we can recognise. That's why Stephen Yeun as the Sentry just didn't work. God, I'm going to... <laughs> because he doesn't look like the Sentry. Even Stephen Yeun knew that. And he's a great guy. If you cast him as Martin Lee from a Spider-Man movie or something, no one's going to complain. They'll think it's great casting. I don't know why that's so hard to see. For and then everyone just calls you a bigot without thinking clearly. But anyway, most of Marvel slate in the next few years is set. Even the dates keep shuffling around. But no, I'm not shocked that these few movies. Well, yeah, that's it. Um, it looks like Marvel really needs to go back to the drawing board. Um, I don't even think they should get rid of Brie Larson. When they first cast Brie Larson as Carol Danvers, I thought, oh, she kind of resembles her. That makes sense. This was back when, before the woke stuff really started to take over, before the infamous, I don't care what 40-year-old white guys think about in Wrinkle in Time. It was before that um, infamous moment where she, she just made herself the most hated woman in the MCU. But yeah, I thought she could work. It just needs good writing, good directing. It seems like nowadays, based on the things she's been saying. How long will you play Captain Marvel for? I don't know. I don't know, does anyone want me to do it again? <laughs> I don't know, I really don't know. I don't have the answer to that. She's been a bit more low key. There is, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. It seems like Hollywood, based on a lot of recent things, is like starting to realize that this woke shit ain't working no more. Money is starting to talk. The loss of money is starting to trump their need for to be um, pseudo activists. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Sorry I had to run. I've had so much on my chest about this stuff. It's not even half of, like, what I've had on my chest about how stupid this is. And it, and it frustrates me even more when people misconstrue or misunderstand why you hate this stuff. And they just consider you either a self-hater or a racist or a bigot or whatever without even understanding the nuance because they just accept and will eat anything. They don't care about quality. They don't care about um, passion. They don't care about art. They don't care about immersion. But yeah, this has gone on long enough. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you again soon. Peace.